Hi and welcome to the Timetable Software training videos. In this video I'm going to demonstrate how to set up our resources. Now your resources are your classes for your intakes of students, the class group facility setup for your classrooms, your lecture theatres, labs, kitchens and any other training facility that you have, your trainers that you set up in here and your subjects that you set up here. Now the most important thing to remember is that in order to set up these resources you must be an admin user okay? in order to access that part there. Now once you've set up your resources, these resources can be used for all your timetables regardless of the database that you select. Okay? And at any time that you set up a resource you can also remove a resource. Now let's look at the class setup area. As you can see when you click on the class uh, setup area, it'll be exactly the same look as what you can see for group, facility, trainer and subject in the sense of the layout for the ID code and the naming system. Now if you want to, you can use the same ID for your name as well. Okay, You don't have to do it like this. You can keep it all the same. Now at any time that you make a mistake, you can double click on the ID or the name and you can correct it. And just click enter. Now keep in mind that once you make changes in here it will make changes to your database or your timetable. And what I mean by that is that when you come to your timetable you may notice that suddenly your subject ID that you see here for your subject ID, your group ID, your trader ID, your class ID or your facility ID may disappear. Okay, If that happens you simply need to go back in and find the actual ID that you're looking for in here, select it and click save and then it'll reappear again as it did before. And the reason why it disappears is that once you make changes in here is that you make changes to the timetable server. So your old database for that timetable that you may have set up previously no longer recognizes the new changes. Now a very important note to, to make is that any time that you want to remove um, any of your classes, your subject, facility, group, you just click on the, the one that you want to, so it's highlight and click remove. When you want to add, you just click on add. Okay. Now what this basically does here is allows you to see from 10 to 100 class IDs, okay, which you can also adjust from here, okay, previous or next. Now the reason why we set it at, as you can see, you can set it here as very few, is if you're on a slow um, server or you have slow internet access okay it makes it faster to appear all, all these names here now let's talk about the class setup when s let's say for example that for a particular intake like you can see here for the bachelor of hospitality management and the master accounting for this particular month and year they had a lot of students enroll into the program so what happened was um, they decided to split the classes into several groups okay in this case here we have BHM 0915A, BHM 0915B, C, D, E, E, F, okay, or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So whenever you split your, your enrollment of students into groups for the same class name as you can see here, okay, you need to group them under the class setup area. The grouping part here is not used for grouping classes in this fashion here, okay, which I'll explain to you later. So Whenever you take large intakes of students or large enrollments of students for a particular program and you need to split them into smaller classes, you set up the classes for those students under this area for that particular class or that particular program and that intake period. Now at any time, for example, let's say for example Bachelor of Business has graduated, you can always delete this one from here or a trainer has left or you no longer run this, you can always delete that from the thing. Now, talking about the group setup, now to explain this better to you, I'll show you from here. Now what happens is maybe for BHM 915A, they had say 40 students enroll into the program, but the facility can only hold 20 students. So what they have to do is split this particular class BHM 0915A into two groups. Okay, so that the first group of 20 students comes in at 8 o'clock, and the second group comes in at 10 o'clock and the same thing for BHM 0915B class we also split into groups. Now something I wanted to demonstrate to you I just moved that there 
you cannot do this. You cannot take the same class name BHM0915A and put it at a diff different facility but at the same time because what will happen is you have a conflict because the program or the timetable server recognizes the entire class name. It doesn't recognize whether you split it into group A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay, so in this case what you have to do is the group will come in either before or after another group that you split up for the same intake name. Okay, so as you can see when class A is having classes, class B may be having a break or may be still at home. And then once they're finished, at 10 o'clock the, the same intake comes in, but the B group comes in at 10 o'clock and group A goes home. Okay, or maybe they take a break. Now when you're looking at your facilities, your facilities once they're set up will always be displayed along the sidebar. And then the coding system I use here reflects the coding system which you probably normally use on all your facility doors. Okay, The ID must be recognized by the student. If they don't recognize it, then they won't know where to find it. They'll see it on the timetable and like, oh, where is that? Okay, so you must make sure your ID reflects the ID system you use for your facilities um, around your campuses or in your training organization. Okay, like I said before, your ID can also be used for your name. Okay, you don't have to have separate or spell it out here. Your trainers. As you can see, George Edward Smith, we have given his ID as an acronym of his first, middle and last name, which is commonly the technique used by a lot of training organizations. Or maybe for Juliana here, we have a Juliana Smith and a Juliana Wajaya. Okay, you maybe I'll have Juliana.s or Juliana.w or Wajaya.j smith.j okay or miss juliana you can use names like this but one thing i'll need to keep into mind when you're building your timetable you must be aware that because the minimum class block that you can have is one hour the amount of characters that you can use as an id is is actually around about 10 10 to 12 characters so if you go over that then what will happen is the code id will not show up 100%. Okay, so you may have find it that, oops, I don't see the A part. Now, the subject setup area here, uh, the subject codes I'm using here are typically used by universities and colleges around the world, okay, which are also recognized by their students. Okay, when they look at their curricula, they see the subject name and there's always a subject code. Okay, so that's basically how you set up your resources. Now, like I said before, that once you've set up your resources, you can use these for any of your timetable databases that you've set up. Now, if any time you have any problems or any issues with your resources with a timetable, please do not hesitate to contact us. And thank you very much for your time.